Hello IoT students, today we will talk about how to program our IoT nodes for networking. So how to write a program that enables our IoT device to connect to network, send some messages, receive some messages and you know make some uh, controlling uh, algorithms. Uh, so what will we, will we talk about today? Uh, we'll show some software examples uh, based on ESP8266 board uh, to connect it to Wi-Fi network. Uh, I will also uh, show the um, examples of MQTT broker and how to use MQTT broker in our uh, in our software examples. Uh, we will show how to use this MQTT to publish and to subscribe messages. But we, before we start with MQTT, be, before we go into this uh, very popular IoT protocol, I'll show you some, uh, something how to control uh, LEDs and how to use simple web server uh, set, uh, set up on ASP8266 to, uh, to connect it to network and to make some very uh, simple control, uh, control algorithms. We will base uh, on ESP8266 Wemos D1 board. I have shown this board uh, during our hardware lecture. Uh, and we will use Arduino IDE environment to write the, uh, the software. We can also use some other uh, env programming environments, like for example Visual Studio Code with Platform IO extension. But here I'll show you how to do the uh, Arduino IDE. Uh, first, we need to select the board. Uh, for example, we can select the board that we really work with, so we must be one mini. It can be also clone. Uh, they are compatible. Uh, we need to set up the communication ports. Sometimes Arduino can, uh, uh, can detect this port automatically. Sometimes we need to pick up the proper one. Uh, and uh, after this, we can use the example, because if we have all the software installed for ESP8266, we can, we can use the simple example, uh, simple web server named Hello Server. So we can import it to our uh, environment and work with it. At the beginning of the software, we need to configure the credentials to be able to access our Wi-Fi network. So uh, in these places that you can f see here, uh, in the slide, we have uh, STA SSID and we have also STA PS key. STA means that our uh, ESP8266 works as the station, network station, not network, uh, not the access point. So we connect our station to our Wi Fi network, uh, writing here the proper SSID of our network and the password. And now, uh, a few words about the software. I will explain everything how it works. So you know that Arduino consists of two Arduino code consists of two parts. One is setup, one is loop. Setup is executed just once at the beginning of the software execution, and it it uh, configures our hardware, configures the, all the parameters of the software. And the loop function is executed repeatedly uh, in infinite loop, and it is executed until we power off our device or, or make a reset. So let's start with the setup function first. Uh, it will be shown on three slides. First slide uh, shows the, you know, the beginning of this uh, setup function. Uh, because our board will use LED to show that it works, we need to set up the uh, pin of this LED as the output. Uh, next, we will check if that it works. So we will write uh, digital write LED zero. After this, we configure serial communication with the, uh, with the function serial.begin, uh, specifying the speed of uh, communication, speed of transmission in bits per second. And after this, we specify that our Wi-Fi module built in our microcontroller should be uh, started in uh, station mode. After this, we can begin operating of our Wi-Fi, providing here the information about uh, uh, the SSID and the passport for our network. And after this, we wait for the connection. Uh, as you can see on this right part of our, our screen, it checks the status of our Wi-Fi module. And if it's not connected, prints the dot. If it's connected, goes further. Uh, after 
connecting or successfully co uh, establishing the connect uh, connection to our network, we have the information, okay, we, our board is connected to the network of the specific SSID. Next, it, use, it tells us what is the IP address that we obtained from uh, DHCP server. Uh, and these three uh, last lines enables also something that is called MDNS protocol. This is a very nice protocol that enables us to connect to our ESP8266 board with the, you know, some, some uh, nicely recognizable name like ESP8266 here. We don't need to uh, store and remember the IP address. We can we can use this uh, the name to be able to access uh, our board. Of course, if we have in the same network more than one such board. We need to uh, we need to provide different names for different boards, and this part uh, of the setup function is the configuration of our server because we want our ESP8266 to present simple web server. So here we have such we can say three uh, three uh, different possibilities, uh, three different internal addresses. So if uh, we, uh, we uh, receive the message, if ESP8266 receives the message uh, from the server such slash, so it means the root of our server, it, it handles root, so it calls the function handle root. If we have uh, some, uh, another request, like a request in line, we will uh, send the, the message uh, that this works as well and if we, there is no such uh, path in the server uh, available we will have the information providing the uh, the callback function handle not found uh, after this we start our server with server.begin function and we send, send the message to serial port okay the http server is, has has started so we can we can connect to it uh, this is done from serial monitoring uh, after con uh, or the process of establishing connection. So as you can see, some dots at the beginning. Next information that our uh, our ESP8266 has been connected to internal IoT network uh, with the specifies uh, IP address. MDNS response are started, so we can we are able to connect to our board with ESP8266 text as the address and that the server is started and now functions because we we told that we have some functions inside uh, and uh, first loop function loop function handles uh, our server requests so we have server handle client uh, function here and mdns update these two functions are needed to our server to work properly uh, handle root, this is, we can say, a callback function that is called if we obtain the uh, request from remote uh, remote computer that uh, we want to read something. And notice that here we have written three lines. First, digital write LED1, so we switch the LED on. Next, we send the message to remote controller, hello from ESP8266, and after this we switch the LED off. I'm pretty sure that this time of sending message is so short that we will not be able to observe this short blink, but we will use it uh, also uh, later in some other purposes. And the browser view looks like this. Thanks to MDNS, we can, we can use the ESP8266 as the address, and we have the message from our ESP8266. But, you know, this, is, this works like web server. It doesn't work like IoT nodes, so we need to provide some IoT functionality here. And the simple IoT functionality can be controlling LEDs. We have LEDs, so we can use them. And this is schematic diagram of the such, we can say, shield that we have here built to be able to control LEDs. We have three LEDs connected with uh, limited, uh, limiting current resistors. Uh, to our Wemos D1 Mini, uh, and we also have one button. So this board, uh, you can see on the left part of this uh, of the slide, we have three different 
LEDs with different colors and one push button. And here is the uh, specification how these LEDs are connected. So uh, LED of the color red is connected to the pin D7. In Arduino, the, the numbering is 13. The same yellow is 12. Green is 14. And push button is connected to input D1 that is in Arduino numbered as 5. Uh, so, if we know how our LEDs are connected in the hardware, we can configure them in the software. So, we configure three uh, integers that represent the numbers, the addresses of our uh, LEDs. And we can set up all of them as the outputs. After this, we can use them in our software. So, we add to our server two different requests, LED1 and LED0, and these two requests will uh, control one of our LEDs. So uh, here we have the, if we send, if the, we send from the remote computer uh, the request, you know, ESP8266 slash LED1, we will have such reaction that uh, our server sends us the message back LED is on, and we use digital write function to turn on the, s the chosen LED. If we send the request LED 0, we will have the information back that the LED is off, and we turn LED off. And this is a picture that shows that it really, that it really works. So, uh, as you can see, LED is on, and we have the information on the web browser the same that, that represents that our LED is really on. But we have the button also. So we can read the current state of the button uh, and uh, how to do it. We need to configure in our software what is the pin for our button. So the first part of the slide. The second part of the slide, of course, in the setup function, we need to specify if our button is output or, on, or input. Here is this input with pull-up. This pull-up is very important because uh, it's, uh, it en ensures that if the button is not pushed, there is a stable uh, one uh, state at the input. And we add to our server the handle button function that is called, that is, uh, yeah, that is called if we uh, send the request slash button uh, in the address. So this handle button function uh, can create some string message that the text is uh, dependent on the state of the button. So if we, the digi if we use the uh, digital read function button and we check if it's equal to zero, we can say, uh, we can respond that the button is pressed. If the state is not zero, the button is not pressed. So we have this information back. And uh, this is the picture that shows how it works. Uh, we use the e address ESP8266 slash button. So it responds with the current state of the button. So for example, the button is, is pressed. Unfortunately, in using uh, such web requests, HTTP requests, it is not so easy to implement the opposite direction of the action. So it's not so easy to implement that if we push the button, we have some new information in the browser. It needs some more responsive <coughs> more, more responsive technologies than uh, simple HTTP. That's why we will not do it in HTTP, but we will do it in the protocol that is intended for such purposes. And this protocol is MQTT. MQTT in our IoT uh, world, in IoT controlling, works much better than HTTP. That's why we will go to MQTT now. So, uh, fortunately, we have in Arduino uh, environment very nice library that is named sub Pub Sub Client, and this library uh, can be used to uh, implement MQTT func functionality in our uh, device. So we need to install this library, and uh, if we use this library, we have some examples. For example, we have the, uh, the MQTT uh, for ESP8266 program, and uh, this program enables us to use MQTT to 
uh, to auto connect to MQTT broker and use MQTT topics to send the messages uh, also from our device to broker and also subscribe some some topics uh, of course we need to start with the uh, specification of our network credentials so SSID and the password at the beginning but also we need to specify what is the MQTT server that we want to connect to this is the broker address uh, we have some uh, uh, brokers available for free uh, around the world for example MQTT dashboard com this is one broker dot MQTT dashboard dot com this is one possibility we have also such broker like here broker dot and uh, this uh, this brokers you can use sending some messages per day uh, completely for free you can also uh, update to some uh, some commercial plans you can use also your own broker if you set up your broker for example using mosquito software uh, on your computer in your network you can you can use the other IP address of this uh, broker and you will be uh, available to send more messages and fully control what, what's happening in, in this broker uh, so setup function works similar like last time so we have built in let so we specify that it should work as output we uh, start the uh, serial communication for you know knowing what's happening in our device we set up Wi-Fi and we set up a server the the client is the uh, instance of the object of this uh, PubSub client PubSub client library, so MQTT protocol, uh, set server, sets the name of the server, and 1883 is the number of the port that uh, by default MQTT protocol uses. Uh, and we need to also set callback function because if we subscribe to some topic, uh, if the message comes for this topic we have the information about it with the callback function so callback function is executed and we can uh, we can check if this is the, the topic that we are really interested in and read the uh, payload of this topic i'll show you this in the moment uh, sometimes our uh, mqtt broker is protected and needs the user id and the additional password it can be sent with uh, client.connect function if we don't specify additional parameters uh, we have we just have here uh, to uh, connect to our broker with the name the name must be unique for every device that is connected to the broker if we have two devices with the same name the broker doesn't know where to send the the information uh, so this must this uh, this name must be unique. I'll show you in a few slides uh, how to do it, uh, how to ensure that this word this name is unique. Uh, and additionally, if uh, the broker needs credentials, needs some authorization, we need to send here the username and the password for the broker. Uh, here is the uh, the part of the software that shows how to create the random number ran, or random name of the client uh, so with this uh, string ESP8266 client is extended with some additional random number that ensures that every device that connects to our broker has the specific uh, ID so the, what I said in the previous slide if uh, to ensure that we don't have two devices with the same name connected to the same broker so this is this is uh, how to do it uh, there is the random string generated added to this uh, name preceding name so we have ESP8266 client uh, the minus and four digit hexadecimal number that is oh we can say somehow unique uh, and this is the slide that uh, shows us uh, after connection yes we have connection so if client is co client is connected we have the information on the on the uh, serial monitor here our uh, uh, message connected and we can publish some message for example during connection we can publish that university out topic uh, says hello world so if 
any other device subscribes this topic university slash out topic it will receive the message hello world with with uh, this topic and for the start for uh, our setup function we also subscribe some topic that is named here university in topic and if some other device publishes message using this topic we will receive this information and callback functions will be executed and we will be able to check what is there and we will be able to to print some messages on the screen uh, this is loop function in loop function we check if we have established if our established connection is still active if not we try to reconnect our uh, our uh, connection to mqtt broker and we have the also the client loop function that uh, enables us to execute all uh, internal functionality of our MQTT client. Uh, this is uh, for the part of our loop function. In our loop function we also publish something periodically. So if we have such uh, value that is named value, we increment it and uh, we send the message uh, that is hello world with this uh, incremented value every time so if we subscribe the topic uh, university out topic using some other computer we will uh, receive every two seconds because this the, the, the first line uh, of this loop um, this if measures the time compares the current time with the time of previously sent message and if it's bigger than 2000 so every two seconds we will send another message using using this topic and the new message will have the incremented value so you will be able to observe that every two seconds we receive slightly different this message this is callback function that is called while we receive some um, incoming message uh, on subscribed topic uh, and this callback function has uh, some arguments it gives us the topic it gives us also the payload of this topic and we have also the information about the length of this uh, of this payload uh, and if the message comes of course the message must be published by some other computer using our topics that we subscribed previously this information is stored in an in mqt mqtt broker so it knows where to send different messages uh, so we can we can uh, print the topic and we can also print print the payload on our uh, screen uh, and additionally we can also control led with within this callback function so if the payload of our uh, the first bit first byte of this payload is equal to one character one we have a possibility to control uh, built-in led so we will switch it on and in the other uh, in the other uh, situation where the this first character is not one uh, we will uh, write uh, we will switch the uh, led uh, led off uh, okay, now we know how to program our ESP8266 and how the software should look like that is implemented in this in this microcontroller. But also we need to know how to use it. Yeah, how to what, what is the the possibility to send MQTT messages and uh, receive MQTT messages. There are a lot of different applications available for different op different operating systems. Uh, one of um, uh, one of example of such application is MQTT Lens, but you can use any other uh, available software for your operating system and for your computer. And you need to, of course, configure it. Configuration uh, configuration principles are the same as for our ESP8266 computer because our computer is treated as the normal MQTT node. So we need to uh, configure the broker IP address or the broker URL. We uh, like, like here, we need to specify some name because we can uh, use different brokers in the software. Uh, port, that is the same port that we use in our ESP8266. Client ID, this is the same 
uh, maybe not not the same in the in the text in the but the meaning is the same as our ID that was generated randomly in our ESP8266 and uh, and also uh, some credentials if if needed. Uh, and using this broker, we can uh, subscribe to some topics. So, you know, you remember our ESP8266 board sent us university out topic uh, messages. So we can subscribe this topic and we can also publish messages using the other topic. So we publish messages uni using university in topic. And here is the part that shows our subscriptions. It looks like this. Uh, our ESP8266 board uh, sends um, us hello world and next hello world hash one, hello world hash two, every two seconds this is incremented. So this is the picture that shows how this communication goes from the point of view, from the perspective of our software on PC computer. Yes, here we have the uh, topic that we subscribe, university out topic, and we have uh, we have the messages hello world, hello world hash one, and so on, so on, every every two seconds. Uh, there are also other applications, uh, not only on PC computers. For example, you can have application on your mobile phone. Uh, there are also uh, different applications, different nice applications. Personally, I use MQTT Dash because it's quite nice. It has uh, some interesting possibilities. And again, we need to configure MQTT broker the same way as in two previous examples. We give the name, we give the address, the port, if needed, username and the password. Uh, after this, we can create such tiles and tiles can have different types. It can be switch, like, uh, like the, the, the lower one. It can be text. It can be some uh, range of values. So uh, different possibilities and very nice uh, application that, uh, that you can use to both control some M uh, IoT devices and also get the readings from, from sensors. Uh, and this uh, is um, the example of configuration of the tile. Mm. This is the tile uh, LED, so the, the lower one here on the lower row. This LED, as named LED, has the topic that we subscribe. Uh, we can also enable publishing, so it allows us to control some IoT device uh, that is connected to the same MQTT broker, of, of course. And we uh, here specify the payload of the message. So the payload is 1 and 0. You remember that our ESP8266 recognized if the first character of the payload is 1, the LED will be on. If it's zero, the LED will be off. So here we have two different icons that present two different states of our LED and we can publish the message using the same topic and uh, control our LED from this application. For incoming messages, we can also subscribe uh, the, the topic, we can enable or, or disable publishing. If you don't want to publish anything using the same topic, we, can, we don't need to uh, mark this, this field. Uh, and uh, this is a text type tile, so this text will be displayed on, on our, uh, our screen. <coughs> and we have also possibility to send some, uh, some uh, text messages. So, for example, here we have outgoing uh, name of the tile and the same topic that we use for subscribing. Uh, and uh, here we, we disable publishing because we don't want to publish, we just want to receive the message from, uh, from external uh, server. Uh, and another uh, part of our lecture is i call this doorbell because we have the button on the board you remember and we want to send the message if the button is pressed or not uh, we need to configure it uh, so at the beginning in the program we can uh, define uh, leds we can define the button we can uh, implement some variables that uh, controls the behavior of the program and uh, stores the previous state of the button yes to to do not send repeatedly messages if we keep the button pressed 
it, it should be sent just once. Uh, so this uh, this button state, last button state, uh, is uh, variables that controls this process. Uh, in setup, of course, we need to set up that our pins are outputs or inputs. You remember this pull up. This is very important. Uh, we begin our serial communication for you know sending messages between computer and uh, and our ESP8266. Set up Wi-Fi. Set up MQTT server. Set callbacks. This is the same as we said as we had had previously. Uh, and we have additional function that is named uh, button uh, button state. No, button state is the variable uh, in the main loop. <coughs> we check what is the current state of the button, so we read the state of the button. We compare if it was high previously, so it means we have pushed the button now. Uh, and additionally, we check the light state uh, to because this button controls the uh, one of the LEDs that is on our board. Uh, so if the light state is zero, we switch the uh, uh, LED on. We publish the message using university and then uh, another topic, button topic this time, and we publish one, uh, and we, we inform ourself, our own program that the light state is one, so our LED is on, to do not send this message again if the light is on. We don't, we don't need to send it again. Uh, the next slide shows the opposite uh, opposite situation if the LED is off uh, if the LED is on we switch it off and we send the uh, the message zero using the topic university button topic uh, and uh, these two lines here uh, preserves from repeating pushing the button as I as I t as, uh, told you at the at the beginning so we can obtain as the result, for example, in our MQTT dash application, if we configure the uh, new tile, uh, new tile as the um, uh, switch tile, so as the button tile, uh, without publishing, but we subscribe this university button topic, and we will have the information on this main screen of the application if. A button has been pressed and the LED is on and a, another time while the button is pressed the LED keeps off so we have such view of the button so we have both information in our application that what is the current state of the LED we can control it with the button and we have also received the information this information is here is updated automatically if our application is started we have the information here uh, almost instant, uh, instantly while we press the button, we have the information in our application that the button has been pressed and the state of the LED changed. Okay, so this is all I wanted to tell you today. Uh, all I wanted to show you, as you can see, we have different possibilities to use uh, our ESP8266 and also other boards uh, because they in Arduino they are quite similarly programmed uh, for using in our IoT systems. We can use simple HTTP messages. We can also use MQTT uh, topics to uh, send some information and also receive some information. Thank you very much for for today's lecture, uh, and that's that's all for for today. Thank you. <laughs>